Welcome back to Wild Speculations. I'm Daniel. I'm Scott. This week we talk about Critical Role Campaign 2, Episode 83, Dark Bargains. Lots of lore drop. <clears throat> lots yeah. of questions answered and lots of questions brought up. Yeah. Uh, and where we've had a lot of combat back to back, this episode is a lot of RP. Yeah. Um, So, shall we get into it? Yeah. Off the bat, Halas's lab. Yeah. Uh, we got sort of... I'm going to call half a point. Okay. Because I think I was I was right on the setup, just not the execution of the plan. Halas didn't immediately try to entrap someone. But I said he was going to yeah. be there in the gem, you know, in a gem or a jar or something. Yeah. In the clone body, so. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of... So, I'm, I'm going to call that halfway. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I said that there would be a way for them to get out independent. Yeah. Of them. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, there was a lot in the early, the first twenty minutes or so of the episode as they were starting exploring the lab. I was like, call it, call it, call it. I was like, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then it took them forty-five minutes. I, now I got a question for you. When they first found the rune runes on the top, did you know what it was? Yes. Me too. I was like, that's the way out. Yeah. Uh, and I also have to, I, I have to get, I don't know, props, uh, give thanks to Sam, uh, who threw out the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I'm because not going to lie. As soon as Travis said it, that's what popped into my head. I'm not going to lie. I was singing at the same time, like independent of each other, but at the same time, I did the same thing. You know how I feel about the show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, I wanted to touch on... In the past, they've gotten in trouble because they've paired the clerics up. Mm -hmm. And this episode, they... It's the table. It's how they are arranged at the table. Hmm that always forces them to pair the clerics. Um, yeah. Because they basi it's, they're basically the people that are next to. You and I go do something. And the reason they do that is so that they can whisper. Yeah. If there's any split, they can just whisper to the person next to them, and it doesn't disturb the rest of the table. So the next time the clerics go off and both get wiped out in an AOE, they can't get mad at anyone. Yeah. Because that's what's doing. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I believe, if I remember right, though, when Ashley comes back, she sits between them, doesn't she? Uh, she does. I think she sat both between them and on, on either side of Taliesin she sat in yeah. the past. But if they put her between them, then Caduceus and Yasha can go off, since we've already talked about their stories may be connected, and then that'll split the clerics. Okay, so we have hope. <laughs> or they'll just move Talos to the other table. Uh, I, I honestly, I don't know, because I've thought about that. As soon as, as soon as I realized that this episode. I thought, are they going to change up the seating? And I don't think they will. Yeah. Um, so, although arguably they should. Eh. Um, but. It, That's what they have text messages for. It's true. Um, but, not finds the gem, investigation 16. And we basically learn Halas ended up like Rob. Yes. From campaign one. Now, interesting thing. The previous week, episode 82, when Caleb's going through the notes and finds the spells, he finds clone, magic jar, trap the soul. Now, the thing that struck me as interesting, I think I mentioned it last week, is trap the soul isn't a fifth edition spell. No, that, those spells weren't gone over till this episode. Okay. 
the specific spells that were in Halas' book were this episode. Okay, then I'm just messing up my memory. Yeah. For some reason, I thought I had known about it longer than just this episode. But Trap the Soul is not a 5th level spell, or a 5th edition spell. And in fact, I think it was 4, maybe 5 years ago, Jeremy Crawford even tweeted that Trap the Soul got rolled into imprisonment in 5th edition. In imprisonment, the big difference between Trap the Soul and imprisonment, they're pretty much the same thing. Trap the Soul leaves the body on the ground. Imprisonment traps the body in the space, in, as, well. In the space as well. Which is why we only see one body. Yeah. Because it was imprisonment. He's in the gem. He's actually in the gem. In his body. And that body was a clone. Matt even made a, a comment about, given you know the apparent age, it's amazing that there are absolutely no scars on the body. That was the cloned body. Mm. And Halas is imprisoned inside the gem. I had not considered that. Yep. That's why there's only one body. Oh my, okay. That puts a whole other spin on things that I was going to talk about <laughs> later. <laughs> You're welcome. Huh. So I, I wanted to throw that out there right away because I realized it right away. When there was only one body, I was like, wait, shouldn't there be two bodies? And I was like, wait. Because... And when I heard Trap the Soul, I was like, wait, it's Trap the Soul. And I pulled out my player's handbook and looked. And then I looked at imprisonment, and I was like, that's what happened. And then in doing my research, I remember I found the tweet, Jeremy Crawford, that was, like I said, I don't remember exactly what it was, four or five years ago, 2014, 2015, hmm. that he said, Trap the Soul is part of imprisonment now. It's not its own spell in 5th edition. Interesting. So... Yeah. Uh, so an aside here. Uh, the one of the early parts, one of the early bits of RP that we had, maybe RP, maybe some meta, uh, was not trying to give Caleb a nickname. <laughs> and I just give a couple to, people nicknames. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to touch on it because I loved uh, that it turned into labia. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, <laughs> Marisha and Laura are like, yeah, this is what we're going to call him now. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, but our first hints at true polymorph. Yes. Upper level polymorph spells. Uh, and Matt didn't just give it to him. Nope. He just, here's some research. Yeah. Uh, do, do you think it's one of the incomplete spells? Yeah. Okay. I well, Matt, Matt said that. Okay. I didn't hear him say um, that it was part of it. See, that's that's why I like chatting with you on the show, because like you pick up things that I miss, and I pick up things that you miss. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, so, like, like I said, it takes them like 40 minutes to... To finally realize that that is the way out. Yeah. Only the way Matt described it. So this, this He described episode, the visual effect of what happened when you don't know. Yes. Well, and it also brings exactly up, appropriate. It also brings up the question of uh, are the tele are the transporters in Star Trek just mass murder devices? Because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like you are, they're teleportation circles. They're even in a circle. <laughs> but you are decomposed here, and, and recomposed somewhere yeah. else. So, in the decomposition, does that kill you, and you are just remade, or is it the same person? Does that mean all the engineers are wizards? Oh yeah. I mean, any science of sufficient is indistinguishable from magic. Yep. And Scotty always says he's a miracle worker. So there you go. It's canon. Uh, so yeah. I, but the way Matt did that was a perfect example of you want to play the scene out. Yeah. 
where you have a few things, you've got all this stuff in your notes and things to do and ways that they can see it. And I'm sure Matt thought that eventually they would get to climbing up the pillars just to see what the ceiling is. Um, but Bo rolled the natural 20, so he gives Bo the, the hint that, yeah, you see some light up there. Yeah. Uh, but he didn't want to give them that this is the way out. So when he describes Frumpkin atomizing, and they're like, oh, shit. This circle does not like cats. <laughs> yeah. Um, which sort of left them with no other choice but to engage with Halas. Yeah. Um, which Halas learns that it's been maybe a millennia that he's been in that stone. Yeah. Um, I mean, it depends on how often, how long, yeah. It's, well, it's 836 after the divergence. Right, but so, it's not clear whether it was directly after the divergence that that happened. What? I mean, that he got trapped in the stone. It was before the divergence, very clearly before the divergence. The war was going on. The Divine Gate hadn't dropped yet. But how long was he in the Happy Fun Ball? Well, that we don't know. Before he did that. We don't know. Because if he spent a week in the Happy Fun Ball... Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, which we also learned from Halas that uh, the time change is dialable. Yes. Yes, it can be. Is it still on the accelerated setting? Yeah. Now, do you think that devil has anything to do with the control of time? No. Okay. I think horned devils don't typically have time dilation abilities, but I didn't know if this was like a special one and just being that's why it was so attached to time. No, I think his obsession his obsession with time is a result of him being trapped there. Okay. Um and it's also a hint at Halas. And it was also there as a hint for Caleb. Yeah. Which, interestingly, Caleb bypassed. He didn't want anything to do with talking to that thing. Yep. Um, and for the first time ever, when offered a book to go through... He didn't. He didn't. Yeah. And he also made it a very... made made it very pointed that he was not... Physically ever touching the gem. Yeah. That he had no desire. And I thought that was very odd. Here are books. Here is a person who can help him with his end goal. And everything is about has been about his end goal. And he's staying away from it like a recovering addict. Staying away from a bar. Do you think that when he finds out from Allura that it is in prison and he can't, you know, possess anyone that he'll want to talk to a lot? Well, he already knows that. They've already, well, I guess they haven't confirmed it. Halas has told them. Yes. And it has been said to them multiple times and amongst the group that have also pointed it out. Look, it's been wanted, conjectured and has not been proven. If if he wanted to take us over, he could have tried it already. He could have gone to that body. He didn't. He's obviously stuck here. Yeah. Uh, and that's that to me is a stronger argument than, you know, Allura casting legend lore on the gem. Yeah. Or any something like well, that. And then, because that's really the only way that they're going to get the info from a spell. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think they... No, I think Caleb's reticence is 
I think he had a realization in witnessing Yusa's fall, Yusa's capture. Because that's really when Caleb's attitude toward the Happy Fun Time Ball changed. Yeah. Uh, when Allura cast Legend Lore on it and spoke its actual name, the Archmage Bane. Yeah. And hey, now you guys have to go in here and get him. And everything that they witnessed basically told Caleb, uh, if Yusa isn't strong enough, I'm not. But do I want to be? Because I also think he sees a lot of Trent in Halas. And I think that's where his rejection of Halas comes from. Okay. Um, not that Halas is a potential way to that power, but that Halas is too much like Trent. Where in his meeting with Yusa, he came to the conclusion very quickly that Yusa is not like Trent. Uh, okay. Which is why he trusts him more. Um, insofar as Caleb can trust another mage. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I... Is Hawass an on onomancer? onomancer? You know, that piqued my interest as well. When they were talking about names. Because he, he specifically said he researched the dragon's name and used the name to bind it. Yeah. And, and we know that he's done that with devils from the top of the devil and that he's wanted on every level of the nine hells. Yeah. So I think he's an onomancer. Yeah. I don't know if he was an onomancer before the UA came out. Probably not. <laughs> but I think uh, he is. Yeah. Because, I mean, there, there's ways to do true name magic, and there's ways to certain spells that if you know the name, the spell is more powerful and yeah. stuff. Anyway, so I think that was kind of a flavor anyway. Yeah. But well, when, and, and once this came out, it was like, yeah, let's just do this. Yeah, and devil and demon stuff, if you have the true name, yeah, you have power over them. Um, so, yeah. I think the Horn Devil is probably somebody who helped Halas build uh, his environment. Gotcha. Um, but I don't think... I don't think he's the power... He, he's not the power source. He's not... He's not the key to the time dilation. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't sure... You know, because it doesn't fit a horned devil unless it's a special horned devil, you know? Like, yeah. horned devil is the base and then add stuff, you know? Um, no. But I thought he brought up time enough that it was... Because even before Halas mentions, you know, really mentions... The well, that was for Caleb. Yeah. That was Matt dangling a hook in front of Caleb. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, but I was like, oh, I wonder if... This has anything to do with that. I think the Horn Devil has a knowledge of time. Okay. Uh, it has an understanding of time. Which is why it is savvy to what's happening in Halas's halls. But I don't... I also have a feeling... Okay, so here's Halas mentioned wanting to get past other potential rivals. Mm -hmm. That that's why he turned the dial up and just stayed in the ball. We have been going on the assumption that Halas was in league with the Betrayer Gods. And this episode, Halas said, I was outside of that. And that comes down to if you trust Halas. Well, in Dragonlance, the Red Wizards, the Red Robes, mm -hmm. were neutrals. Yeah. He could be the Red Robe to 
uh, Raven Queen's White Robe and Vecna's Black Robe. Yeah. Because they were both wizards in the age of Arcana. Yeah. So, I mean, he very well, he, I mean, he was a contemporary of mortal Raven Queen and Vecna. Yeah. In life. Exactly. And I have a feeling that that mage that went through time, who was, whose plan was to go back in time and warn himself of things, mm -hmm. may have been, was also, well, but may, not may have, was definitely a contemporary of Halas. Okay, so you don't think it was Halas anymore? No. Okay. Uh, once they I know found, you had that theory for a while. Yeah, once, well, once they found the body and once they were, uh, it was, I was like, okay, yeah, no, definitely not. Um, but no, I, but it could have been a contemporary and if it was a contemporary, then that would be a rival of Halas. Mm -hmm. And Halas may have been wanting to bypass whatever damage he thought was going to happen mm -hmm. from his temporal experiments by staying in the fun ball. Okay. And the demon, the devil may have been an advisor to that guy. Okay. Very, I, can, I can see that. Now, time can be slowed or accelerated in the happy fun ball. Can it be reversed? My gut is no, but there is precedent that time could potentially be reversed, and that's in the Fey one. Yes, because it's possible to come back before you went. Yes, um, it's a very rare chance on the well, the, the temporal. Yeah, there, there's there's that precedent. There's if we're going to keep reaching into dragonlands, there are magic items that can send you back in time. Yeah. Um, but also, it would be part of why Halas is like, time doesn't really matter. What does the accelerated or slowed passage of time matter when you can go back? Yeah. That's what I got out of that statement. Interesting. Although I would imagine it is harder to go back. Oh, I imagine it is. Um, and there may be a caveat that the, the well, device I mean, can only take you back to when you first activate it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it could be like the, the Andrew Sphinx layer. You can just do 10 years. Yeah. You know, so you can get 10 years back. But is that 10 fun ball years? Or ten real years. You would be real, real years. <laughs> um, but I don't think, I don't think Halas wants to go back. No, I don't either. But because, like, I was thinking about this after the episode. Whatever Halas, whatever game he had going on before he ended up trapped, if he's able to get them to untrap him, which I think there's a good possibility, he will now be arguably the most powerful wizard on Alexandria. Well, I mean, if your estimate is right, and we don't count happy, fun time shenanigans with time, he hasn't really been studying anything for over 800 years. Yeah, but <laughs> Matt has said many times that mo a lot of powerful stuff was lost. Yeah, that's true. So he has all that. He doesn't have to study. He knows it. Yeah. Um, um, speaking of if he can get out, let's talk, and I mentioned this to you earlier, crackpot theory. I don't think it's going to happen, but the coincidence is just too good not to bear mentioning. Yeah. So Sam, at the beginning of this campaign, was just repeating outfits and repeating things and said he was going to repeat you know, and he's kind of dropped that off. Yeah. Um, well, Scanlan died in episode 83. Not just died in episode 83. Scanlan left to be replaced by Tyrion in episode 85. Not has a reason to leave in that she's got the gem, and the gem has a person who has got knowledge of how to get her back into her halfling body. And Caleb seems to be pushing that away more and more. 
Well, he's trying to make it it's, that he is the only way that she's going to be able to do it. Well, that, in, I mean, in this episode, he said, we can't worry about that now. He's gone from, I'm researching that as much as my own stuff, to we can't worry about your problem now. And I'm 99% sure Sam did not miss that statement. <laughs> yeah. Um, just because of how much he picks up. Yeah, well, and while you make, it's a fun thing to think about. Uh, yeah, it, it's more a thought experiment, but it's a possibility. I mean, the, the not does not have the same level of reason to leave that Scanlan did. Not's death was her own fault. I, and her friends brought her back right away. They did not cover her in Manning's, chain her to a bed. And make her look the fool to play a joke. And they didn't parade her in front of Luke. The way that Box Machina showed Scanlan to his daughter. Um, so, true, but... The thing is, it not might have the gym, but her the, the only spellcasters that she knows... Uh, was are the mighty nine? Yusa is not gonna right free him. Allura's Allura's not. not. So she's really only got these guys, unless she absconds with it to Jorhas or the Empire and tries to Jorhas, get Jorhas. The gentleman can put her in contact with someone. Yeah. I mean, it's not impossible. It's just, it's a long road to go. It's much easier for her to keep it pocketed and to produce a fake ruby for them to dis cast Dispel Magic on and then shatter. Hey, it's gone. It's much easier for her to do that. Well, they're not wanting to do that. Well, that's what Yusa wants to do. No. No, it's, no when yeah, they Yusa wants to hide it away. Yeah, he wants to just so seal it Caleb's away the one that wants the to, gem. Caleb's the one that wants to yeah. kill him. And I think it's because, well, I think they're going off of Trap the Soul. But yeah. if it's actually imprisonment, he's just going to be back in his body. Yeah. Which would be hilarious for Caleb to think that he's getting rid of him because the body's not there. Only to release him. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's why Yusa is like, no, let's just seal it away. I think he realizes. Mm. Yeah. Or suspects. Or suspects that it could be. And he's like, it's safer just to seal it away in case it is. Right. Uh, so they, they get out of there. They tease Halas about the sex bot. Yes. Uh, I don't know. Part of me thinks Bo and Jester made a compelling argument. That he's got a he's got a golem for everything else. He's a wizard. I mean, you know, if if he does, he does. I'm not shaming anybody. Uh, but yeah, uh, you do you, Halas. Uh, the, uh, oh, now I'm blanking on the name. What's the prison called again? The, uh, Prison of Suit. Yeah. So, yeah. That was an interesting mechanic. And I'm sad they didn't test how much talking they could do. Yeah. Um, because I would have liked to have seen that mechanic. No. It's too bad one of them wasn't a sorcerer with subtle spell. Yeah. My theory is that it wouldn't alert the suit, but it would alert the mage hunter golem. Because you're still casting the spell. If it's a sufficient level. Yeah. Uh, and I think that level cap is third. Yeah. Uh, first, second levels aren't going to alert the golems. Uh, it's anything over that. Uh, and arguably, it might even be higher than third, but well, it's de it's definitely at least fourth level. Yeah, third is where it 
may or may not be. Yeah. Because uh, the Widow Guest who have a fire, which is a fourth level spell, spell yeah. is what triggered the first one. Yeah. Um, Do you think Divine Magic triggers it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and Jester casts Spiritual Weapon at fourth level in that Foggy Method fight. Uh, so it could have been either one of them that triggered it. Um, which means it wasn't just Matt getting them, putting pressure on them to move along. It was, they actually did that, and this was a result. Yeah. Um, so. See, my, my thought was that it was the web, and that maybe Divine Magic doesn't trigger it in case he needs to be healed. He doesn't see clerics as rivals, really. Well, that's a good point. But if he was being healed by somebody and the golem showed up, he would just tell the golem to piss off. That's true. Uh, so, yeah. But I, I think it's any spell slot okay. of X level uh, will bring the golem. Um, Do you think the adamantine chests were real? Or just an illusion that not tripped? I think they were real. Okay. Where do you think they went? His bedroom. Or one of his... Or some other room we don't know about. Either his bedroom, the armory, or some room we haven't seen yet. Because there's a hundred plus rooms in this thing. It's true. And I was thinking about that. I was thinking about how... He, he's got to have some kind of storage unit for the stuff he takes from the mages. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the evidence lockup. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But I was trying to think of how you could organize it in such a way, because basically, I think they found another uh, passageway that uh, Yusa hadn't found in the tunnel, the mm -hmm. funnel yeah. underneath the froggy myth. Um, so that's another entry point somewhere else. Yeah. Um, and it seems to end it, the plane shift that was in the donjon uh, went to Halas's door, which makes me wonder if there's a key or something that Halas has that he can basically put it on the door, and when he turns the knob, it shifts the the points coming into that door. Because mm. otherwise you sort of run out of potential entries and exit points. Yeah. Because uh, I was like, how do you get 100 rooms from this? But if he has something like that, or if you can get to these other places, and then there's always some room with a plane shift circle to yeah. get you back to one. Yeah. Um, was my other thought. Uh, and I, I, it may be both. Yeah. Um, so, we've already talked about not having the gem. Yes. And what she is going to do with it. Um, I think likely, if pressed, she will pull out a fake gem and offer up a fake gem. I don't know that she has one. I think she does. Okay. Um, not has been collecting gemstones. That's true. Forever. And so does she have one that's the size of her palm? I don't remember Matt ever describing one such as that. Uh, but she is an illusion specialist. Yeah. Uh, well, so, so long as... Because an arcane trickster. Yeah. 
uh, but so long as she has an item that is about the same size, she can cast an illusion on it. That's true. And make it appear to be that gem. And so long as the Mighty Nine leave that area before the illusion fades, uh, no one will be the wiser. Yep. Until Yuza says, Until they get contacted. Hey, <laughs> what the fuck? And by that time, they're already going to be on the ocean. Yep. Well, maybe. Uh, More than likely. So, Jester, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Laura and Jester. And how, once again, her idea was attributed to somebody else. Yeah. And on my initial, on Thursday night, I was I, I kind of empathized with her, but on my second watch, I started wondering if that is happening to Laura in the company. Because she has a baby. Right. And we know that that takes up a lot of her time. Right. Babies do that. Yeah, they do. Uh, Travis uh, is involved, but he has the luxury. He's the CEO. Right. Um, so he sort of has to be at the office. Where Laura's position, she's the art, she, uh, the merch. Yeah, she's merch director. Um, and she comes up with some of the design and stuff. And right. She does stuff. But I don't think, I, I could be wrong, but the way that Travis reacted and Sam to that. Uh, and not has done it in the past. Sam has done it in the past where Knott's boosted up Jester yeah. when other people have done it. And Travis in the past hasn't really. This episode he did. Yeah. And he did it in a way that I was like, is he trolling the shippers? Probably. Or, and then I was like, well, maybe not. Maybe, maybe Laura is actually having a problem with that. Or she says something, and the other people in the company think it was somebody else's idea. Yeah. And she just sort of, that, she's that's, there too. That's And that's hard to deal with. Yeah. You know. Uh, and, you know, we all try to, you know, table stuff, non-table stuff, try to separate it. But sometimes... It comes through. Yeah. Uh, and I got a little worried. I hope you're wrong, but I do have a gift for these kind of things. <laughs> yeah. Spotting the office politics stuff. Um, and yeah, just all the, and I was, just, and I, I, I would rather not have thought about that. Yeah. But, uh, as I started thinking about it, it just all sort of was just falling into place. And I was like, <sighs> but yes, we did get a bit of Ford. Giving Jester a little pep and a practically taking her by the hand or the arm. Yeah. Sort of uh, old Westy type. Yeah. Uh, flirta flirtatious behavior. Um, although it's been, you know, a month or two since he got laid, so maybe he's. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, maybe he's in the mood now. <laughs> and they're going out to sea soon. We know what happened the last time Ford went to sea. And he does like powerful women at sea. And Jester's <laughs> going to be a high priestess. Just like Avantika was. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um... 
we also talked about Caleb and Halas, and I think I think their motivations, their drive is very similar, and I, I think that scares Caleb. Yeah. Um, so, do you think... Well, no, before we get there, Allura comes to the tower and has this new spell. Yes. Uh, you were re you were digging through books. Did you find anything? No. Uh, I think you're right. <laughs> uh, I think Allura's spell takes a lot from the Space Arcanum. From World of Darkness, Chronicles yeah. of Darkness, Mage of the Awakening. Um, because so much of what, what he described is the threads that bind all of them. Yeah. And using those connections to discover information. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's straight out of Mage of the Awakening. Yeah, it is. Um, so... <sighs> It was nice in that we got a aha moment. We got a, we called it, yep. moment out of that scene. Yeah, because we said a long time ago when the Angel of Irons was first dropped that it was either the Chain of Oblivion or an avatar thereof. Yeah. Uh, and confirmation in this episode. Yeah. It's the Chain of Oblivion. Now, uh, here's the question. And... If it happens, it's going to be a behind-the-scenes thing. But does Allura notify the Mighty Nine about this? Vox Machina? Or Vox mm -hmm. Machina. Or at least Percy and Vex, because Percy, you know, he lives where the Paler Sun Tree was planted. You know, Paler, who was key in defeating the Chained Oblivion, Vex is the champion of Paylor. Scanlan may be the champion of Ioun, who he... You know, these all these champions of the people who locked him away, and given their closeness. No. But in saying that, it may stress some viewers' verisimilitude. Um. Because, yes, the question must be asked. If she knows these level 20 adventurers. Who are the champions of the gods who put them away the first time. Yeah. Uh, why doesn't she call them? Right. Uh, now, there is a potential here that for Christmas or New Year's, Matt had a plan potentially for a crossover where members of the Mighty Knight actually meet members yeah. of Vox Machina. Um, it would be, I, I think that's more of a fan wish than a company plan. Yes. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, um, but it does beg the question, uh, we know what happened to the, what Vox Machina did after everything, after the search for Grog and after that, and after that, uh, after the wedding, we basically know what happened with them, how they went into, re how, well, how the retirement years went. Yeah. Uh, this does give Matt an opportunity to touch base with the players and talk about perhaps where they are now. Yeah. Um, or, or does she contact them and they send children to look into it? The young Dorolos? Yeah. Uh, the youngest short halt. Yep. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but again, I don't. I don't see it happening just because Matt doesn't want. Right, and that's why I that. say if it happens, you know, like it, it's almost at a point given Alora's connection to Fox Machina that it's going to happen. The question is. What are we going to find out they did behind the scenes? Because mm. they're not going to be tied directly to what the Mighty Nine are doing. But 
it will take more explaining and you know gymnastics of the mind to explain why they did nothing or weren't notified than it would to say, oh, they were doing this stuff behind the scenes. Yeah. In another part of the world. Yeah. Although it could just come up lower and it yeah, one line of dialogue. Uh, you know, yes, the adventures that I knew, or, you know, it's stated that the members of Vox Machina, who could be reached and are available, are seeing to the defenses of Exan of Tal'Dorei. Yeah, it could, it could be that, or it could and be... And since you guys are on it here in Wildmount, they're content to leave it to you. Yeah, or it could be we need to talk to Alora, get some information. Oh, well, my friends have been looking into things. Here's what is found out. Oh, okay, that's what they're doing. They're researching too, giving the Mighty Nine the lore dump. Yeah. Then it's completely behind the scenes, and it makes it makes a lot more sense than, oh, they weren't contacted. Yeah. Uh does Caleb ask Allura for her coordinates? For her digits? So they could go to Iman? As it were? Uh, maybe? Okay. I could see Caleb doing it. I could see Liam refraining. Okay, that might be fair, but part of me wants to argue that if Liam can get the coordinates to Iman, they can go to Gilmore's Glorious Goods. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> and the Mighty Nine could meet Gilmore. Yeah. Uh, if he's still there. Yeah. Well, even if he's not there, he can be there. Yeah. Um, Although, well, yeah. I, I don't think we'll see them in the morning. I, I don't want to say we won't, because we might. We, we might, but I don't think we will. Because um, we may get, and if not in Mon, then the Cobalt Reserve in Western. That's more likely. Hell, it's more likely they'll end up in Whitestone. Because Whitestone is where the Chain of Living was put down. That corrupted temple under... Well, or Whitestone was the temple to Ion that Thorazdun corrupted when he gave her the grief's wound. And that's where the battle happened that Paylor struck him down and they bound him. That's why the sun tree was planted there. That's where that battle happened. So there's a much bigger chance that they're going to go to Whitestone than Amon. It's true. Well, and they already talked about going to Whitestone when they were talking about yeah. where to get the residuum. residuum. Yeah, and that was, you know, I think... Is that where the little, the small crystals for? Ooh, maybe. But yeah. But, I mean, that's where, um, it was right near the end of the, um, I'm drawing a blank on their name, Delilah. Oh, the Briarwoods? Briarwoods, thank you. Right at the end of that arc, when they had discovered the temple yeah. down there, that was a lore dump that Matt made in that episode. Mm -hmm. And that's where the chain of oblivion was struck down. That's why Paler planted the seed there. We grew the sun tree. The temple underneath was a corrupted temple to Ion. Mm -hmm. It became corrupted when she received the grievous wound and all that. Yeah. Uh, so we talked about this last week. Last few minutes. Uh, get into speculations for this coming week. Yes. About how much time they were in, actually in the fun ball, being... Somewhere close to 50 hours. Uh, and do you think Matt 
will basically dump on them this is the actual date and it will be much closer to Traveler Con? Mm -hmm. Or do you think he's going to not do that and give them a few weeks to deal with Oban? Well, and if it's 50 hours, they went in roughly two months, give or take a week, before Traveler Con. Yeah. That means they've got a week and a half to two, you know, between a week and three weeks before Traveler Con. Yeah. So if he says, bam, this is the day, they've got a few weeks. But the question is, can they do that and get to Traveler Con? Uh, the answer is no. Um, because they have no idea where yeah. Oban is. Because it, it, it's at most three weeks, at least one week before Traveler Con. Yeah. By my calculations. And I could be wrong. You know, I'm not Matt. I'm not Grip Roll Stats. Yeah. Um, so, part of me wants to say they are, they are not going to have time to go after Oban. Uh, yeah. Whether Matt does the math or not, I think narratively, it, it makes the most sense for Traveler Con to be immediate not that they're in danger of being late but i think part of me, what part of me wants to see is for them they're going to have probably a meeting with yusa and Alura inside the tight peak tower mm -hmm. and they're going to go well, what day is it Alura will tell them and jester will go oh my and then they will ask my name what are you going to do and just i got something i got to do but we won't Oban things important. We'll get to it. And she goes to see her mother. And the hotel is full of traveler of people with the traveler holy symbol. Okay, here's a Okay, I've I've got three things that I think are one of three things. Um and that that's a good possibility, but you mentioned Chester's mother. Is it just a coincidence that the ruby of the sea is a shut-in and the ruby on the astral sea was technically a shut-in because he was imprisoned? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I did like the... Uh, when Sam's like, did you just tell the devil you're about your mother? Your mother's name? Well, not no. her real name. <laughs> Um, so I also kind of would have liked to have seen the devil uh, play more into Jester being a tiefling. Yeah, that would have been nice. Child of Asmodeus, come, come. Yes. Um, so either he gives them the time, like Oban's not so far out of the way that they can't get to him on the way. Um, If Oban is heading for the temple to free, to do what Ford was supposed to do, yeah. Uh, if he's lost the Laughing Hand, if the Laughing Hand is struggling, then he's going to need something else. Yeah. Uh, and if we're right that those three things need to be released in order for the Taras to be released, yeah. Then um, Oban. Was on his way to do something at Traveler Con anyway. Do you think so? I don't, but it's a possibility. That's also my thinking. Uh, <laughs> that there is a significant event timed. It makes sense that both of them are onto the same thing. So either the the timing is important. And or the location well, is also there, there. There's also the option that the traveler that we are completely wrong about the traveler. It is not Ardigan, and I completely believe that it is. But there's the possibility that it's not, and it's a guise of another one of the betrayer gods trying to break through. Yeah. Uh, if you want to tie it into everybody else, it could be the cloaked serpent. He's got the trickery domain. Yeah. 
and could be just manipulating all these, you know, this old infirm Noel, this young shut-in girl, manipulating. That's why she could be defacing the other gods' temples at his request, and that this traveler con is his way out. Yeah. I don't think that's it. I don't want that to be it. I want it to be Artigan. That's a much better thing. But there is that possibility. Oh, man. I love because Travis said, I don't remember if it was this episode or the episode before. I think it was this one. Where he's like, Yeah, we're just gonna have we're gonna show up and everyone's gonna fucking die because that's what happens. He's yeah. like, Do you remember last campaign? Because he was equating the traveler with Vecna. Yeah. Ascending to Godhood. Uh, and again, my my hopes go to uh, a Kuatoa yeah. ceremony. Um, and if it is the Cloak Serpent, then that would make sense. Uh, but, but I again, I don't. Yeah, we're pretty we're pretty all in on the Artigan as the traveler. Yeah, yeah I'm. I'm still 100% um, sure that that is correct. Yeah. Um, but this is wild speculations. I have to throw out there. There is minimal 0.001% chance that this is what it is. On the off chance we're right. Um, do you think... So one of the things that happened in this episode that we didn't touch on yet mm -hmm. is the question of leadership came up again. Yes. And they danced around it and sort of sidestepped it. Well, not, not said, well, you know, Caleb is the leader. Well, she's always said that. And that always rubs Beauregard the wrong way. And you could and tell her too. Yeah. And you could tell that both of them were like, Ooh. Uh, but because Caleb wanted nothing to do with the damn thing, Bo was able to yeah. swoop in. And she made a convincing argument, you know. Well, both convincing and not convincing. Yeah. Well, I mean... The fact that she doesn't cast magic doesn't mean her body doesn't have the aptitude for it. True. Especially when it, if it's going to be his mind in her body. Yeah. Uh, that just gives them better physical stats. But you don't want anyone who can cast Counterspell to be the one holding the gem. Either. So that puts Ford and Caleb out. Yes. Um, and then the other two can, in theory, cast Dispel Magic. So you don't really want them. So it's basically got to be not or well. And Bo's got the best chance to make the save. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if you want to do the numbers, crunch, yeah. <laughs> um, well, even if you don't, she's a monk. That's part of their thing. They train to, you know, hold us a body. Yeah, that's true. There's a reason they end up proficient in every save as they go down the line. There's a reason well, why they can spend their disease. action to remove any charmed or frightened effect or anything like that yeah. from themselves without making a save. Just be like, okay, I'm done. But do you think the pressure to pick a leader gets stepped up? Because I think it does. And I think it does, but for a different reason than you're thinking. Okay. I think it does because we're getting higher in level. And end games are different for each person. I think... And people wanting different things is what's going to force the... Who's the leader? Who do we follow? Not really. Well, the reason why it's going to become important is if the Mighty Nine want to become a political force, they have to have a leader. That's why it's going to become important. Do you think they want to become a political force? Yeah. Okay. I don't think it was... Like, they were joking, but I think that planted the seed when they were like, well, let's just go off on the island and create our own country. Hmm. And the fact that they have basically staked out the middle ground between the dynasty and the empire 
and to clean them both up and bring both countries together to face this threat. That, by default, makes them a political force. Okay. That's true. So one of them is going to have to step up and be the leader. Uh, and this next trip out to sea is going to test whether or not Ford is going to be that one, or if Jester is going to be the one, or if it's going to be Caleb. Or Bo. Bo may just shock us all. Or Caduceus could, could be the dark horse. But we will have to wait and see. Uh, tonight is Matt and uh, me. Yeah, I think Liam. And we are going to yeah, watch Liam. that. We will see you guys uh, next week. Bye, guys.